about 570 million years ago, in a very brief period of time, we see the origin of many different, often very complex body forms, some of which are still with us today. Many forms that resemble modern invertebrates, crustaceans. We even see the first fish. These early fish could move like no other creatures that came before. Instead of relying on ocean currents to carry their fate, males could directly target the female's eggs with their sperm. But even this method of mating had its pitfalls. The eggs, once fertilized, were not only tiny and fragile, they were exposed. This forced the parents to either stand guard or abandon them altogether. It would take another 200 million years for evolution to come up with a new plan, which is where sharks come in. In sharks, evolution gave rise to an innovation that allowed males to deploy sperm directly inside the females. Sharks invented sex, so to speak. This is just a huge difference from what we see in animals that lived a half a billion years ago. Instead of two fish just randomly spraying their eggs and sperms out into the water, helter-skelter, these animals have to actually come in contact. Sharks are one of the first vertebrates to physically connect during sex. It may sound friendly, but with sharks, it's anything but. Cute guys, right? The male will bite her pectoral fin, her arm fin, and roll her over. Then the male has these two claspers, or peni, and one is rotated around while the other stays back and that's inserted into the female's cloaca, which is the common duct. This vertical hold may look brutal, but biologically speaking, it's a thing of beauty. It looks to me like a ballet, because they have very difficult tasks to go through to bring themselves together. Each seemingly violent act has a necessary sexual function. The male flips the female shark to her back to relax her for penile insertion. He sinks his teeth into her skin to trigger her ovulation. She's even protected from his gashing. Female sharks have skin twice as thick as male sharks. They have amazing healing properties. They can have huge lacerations, which would kill a human, and they're perfectly fine with it. But the crucial innovation of shark sex is the penis. Once the male is firmly attached, a spur at the appendage's tip prevents it from slipping out. A sac in the male's abdomen fills with seawater and propels the sperm directly into the female's womb, where eggs await fertilization. So not only did they invent copulation, but they also invented getting pregnant. That is to say, internal fertilization. This represents a whole new stage in reproductive biology. Internal fertilization has been a foundation of sharks 400 million year reign as the ocean's top predators. Not only does it protect their developing eggs from enemies, it leads to the birth of large, fully formed pups that are literally born to kill. For hundreds of millions of years, animals would remain confined to the Earth's oceans. 370 million years ago, a unique lineage of fish began to move towards land. Called tetrapods, they evolved legs from fins. In time, those legs became sturdy enough to let them move out of the water. But this new world presented new problems. If you look around today, there are creatures that spend all their time on land. But to do that, you have to have a whole lot of tricks. You have to be able to lay eggs or give birth to live young. If you are laying eggs, your eggs have to be waterproof. The fish ancestors of tetrapods simply dropped sperm into the current to fertilize eggs. 
but that wouldn't work on land. So one group of tetrapods, the ancestor of reptiles and mammals, successfully changed their method of reproduction. As sharks had before them, reptiles developed internal fertilization. And then they went beyond, evolving an extraordinary adaptation to protect their young. The amniotic egg. This marvel of evolutionary engineering not only nourished the developing young within, its hard shell kept the egg from drying out. The amniotic egg gave reptiles the ability to conquer land, reproducing, spreading, and growing on a whole different scale. And for the dinosaurs, this scale would be a big problem. When you're 40 feet long and weigh six tons, how do you do it? 